Hey, I'm Ryan, here with my brother Daniel. This is Rolls in the Family, and today we're headed back in the time capsule to talk about our most played games of all time. Wow. This is us really looking back at what are the games that specifically number of raw hours played. So that really gives a chance for longer games to make the list. You know, shorter games can potentially make the list, but we got to play them a ton. <laughs> Which um, there are some we did. <laughs> yeah, There are some that we did. This is a bit of an interesting list. It's definitely very heavily skewed to kind of when we were first getting into board gaming. We were both still living at home. There was a lot of board gaming that happened yeah, in that you're, season. You're gonna get a deep. You're gonna get a deep dive of uh, the, our childhood together. Yeah. So, so there was a stretch there that really <laughs> just the volume <laughs> gave a lot of chances it's for games to make this list. It's honestly insane to look back on. Yeah. Yes. Um, this is a list that we probably aren't gonna do often. Maybe every five years or something, we'll come back and see because it's harder for things to shift around. Um, but it'll be fun to talk about some of these games, talk about if we're still playing them or not still playing them. We've got links to them all in the description below. That's a way you can help support the channel as well. But this, this might be a long one. So let's, let's jump into it, Daniel. Let's, let's get going. Yeah. With number 20. Yeah. Number 20, uh, game. Uh, what, what do we call it? Game 20 game most, that you've most played, played, most played, hours. Of most played game, <laughs> something hours, um, is a game that I would guess that we actually are pretty high in the world when it comes to <laughs> most played hours of this game and that's going to go to dungeon fighter yeah uh man we got i'm trying to remember how long ago we got dungeon fighter for the first time that's something i, mean, I feel like I you think would it know. was right after the first edition came out so it's probably around 2011 i think you actually yeah. got it for your birthday and then it ended up in my collection i did Wow. Yeah, I think so. I don't, I don't even think I knew that. Yeah. You must have just taken it right away. Is that one of those gifts where you just gave it to me and then it was really yeah. for yourself? Yeah, 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 I see how that is. Yeah, so I've got a, a 55 plays of Dungeon Fighter uh, coming in at around almost 42 hours. But, uh, you know, Dungeon Fighter 1, we, we played it so many times um, over the years. And I think uh, it's one that our gaming group both from our kind of strategic group that we liked playing with really liked dungeon fighter and it was also a pretty accessible one and so just over the years uh you, you really never get tired of kind of that i mean it's just such a unique mechanic right throwing dice at a target going through a dungeon together and the fact that it's also fairly accessible i think allowed it to be played with almost even a group that you might even play like a more of a party game with it kind of yeah. has that feel and so i think that's kind of what over the years allowed it to get played so many times for us um and and make it onto the list at number 20 so yeah and there we you go, do now have the second edition of dungeon fighters we so do that's one that can keep living that on one is gonna us. that one is gonna steadily keep growing yeah it's a staple in the collection so number 20 dungeon fighter nice i'm gonna keep it on the dexterity side of the fence um with one of our <laughs> I would say probably favorite dexterity games and one that really um, saw a lot of play, obviously making this list. And this is pitch car. Now pitch car oh, is a wow. game that is um, not easy to get anymore. So I'm glad <laughs> I ha still have all my stuff for it, but just, you know, it's, it can play up to eight players. You get a group together, you move all the chairs back from the table. So everybody can yep. walk around and, you know, do your shots and you build a custom track and yeah, it's just, there's been so many good experiences with it. And there was definitely a stretch there, again, back about 10 years ago, where we were regularly pulling out, we were playing it with our parents, which, you know, we, we don't often wow. get both our parents in on, yeah. you know, board games. So that was one that they, they liked playing. Um, mm -hmm. So lots of good times with, with Pitch Car, um, one that I do not get to the table very often anymore, which is a little bit of a shame, like... It that shouldn't is. be that hard to get to the table. Right. Um, I just maybe don't think of it like first mm -hmm. when I'm thinking of like, oh, I've got, you know, six people or whatever. It's got um, a little bit of a it's got a little bit of a finicky setup. I mean, you set up the track, yeah. obviously, but you also, you know, kind of put the cards under yeah, to make sure there's you no know, uh, everything's yeah. level and like all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's, it feels I, I think I've gotten in my mind more that it feels like it's so much set up because I remember back in the day when we were playing it, I mean, we could set it up in, you know, under 10 minutes and be up and playing right. and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's a very fun one. Logged, I think I got, what, 47 plays of pitch car at this point. Um, 
So it make it makes it barely onto the list at number two. Sneaks 20. on. Nice. Sneaks on. Yeah, that game that game has one of the best table presence of uh of games you have. You know, it's one people just look at and it's like, wow, that looks really fun. Yeah. So Okay, awesome. Uh coming over to number nineteen. It's actually a exact tie with my number 20 in terms of uh time so i suppose it could have been either these ones are kind of interchangeable here uh but number 19 is gonna go to a feast for odin uh wow yeah i well so here's the thing i have 15 plays of it and it definitely helped because i got it um so you had it first and then i got it a Mm -hmm. couple years ago i believe and my wife and i have played two player uh several times and even got the norwegians expansion and i've been able to play it since so i think that those kind of recent plays have really been able to boost it now um it'll be interesting to see kind of the long term of this um my wife doesn't love it as much as i was hoping uh you know she's kind of similar to us in that loves the really tight worker placement isn't as big on kind of the sandbox uh a million actions type thing but i love feast for odin it's one that uh, i fortunately have some people here that uh also are interested in playing it so um definitely one that i think will i think will stay in the collection you know yeah. it's one i love it's just you know how much are you able to get to play it uh but yeah uh with 15 plays got onto the list number 19 yeah that's interesting because i've so i've played feast for odin 17 times but it okay. missed my list at 21 Oh, so wow. I guess that just means I've played. I, I've got a couple. I, I know I have a few games that I are on my list and not on your list. But well, and that would bumped. you said how many times did you play it? Seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah. But it missed your list. Oh wow. Yeah. How about that? So my my, my floor for my list is more hours. You you're know? more. Yeah. You're just more, more uh, experienced, experienced gamer. gamer. I'm a newbie. Newbie to yeah. this. My number nineteen is a funny one. Um, this is a game that only is on this list because it entered the collection at the prime time to just get played like crazy. And this is Earth Reborn. (laughs) This came out back in, I don't know, 2010 or something. It's kind of a game that was ahead of its time in that it was this big, over-the-top production with like miniatures and stuff. It reminds me more of what we see from Kickstarter campaigns It looks so cool. But we were, you know, at the point where we were kind of, we had just gotten it, we were all in on it. So, I mean, we're like playing it every single day. Yeah, this was that season of life where we would play like six heavy games in like one day. You know? Yeah, it's- and we were, our willingness to keep trying on a game that like we were convinced that we're going to like or we want to really like. Yeah. And we had some good times with Earth Reborn. But, you know, I think we learned eventually, it's like, okay, this this game's got some problems it's it's just there's some funny things with it like you get objectives that you have to like oh you have to kill this other person but the other person just like has a higher movement value than you so once the person knows you're trying to get them they just run away and you're like well i like can't do anything and a lot of times the most fun thing was like building the map yeah <laughs> like <it> was, <laughs> and then yeah there were just some weird games of it sometimes you get kind of it had this interesting tile like action selection thing that you like assigned them and then assigned points to the different sides of the tile is what you right. could do with that pl- player um, with that character. But sometimes like if you didn't have a shooting action or something, cause you're drawing <laughs> those blindly from the thing, you're like, well, I guess I can't do that, which some tactical fun there, but ultimately right. not a game. I end up on the other side of it, like really recommending and ended up <laughs> leaving the collection. But at the time we played 25 games of it and it's, or at least I did. And it's not yeah. a short game. So it does make the list. Yeah, well, I'm just going to jump right in because my number 18 is also Earth Reborn. So there you go. A little pair there. I played 22 games of it. So you get three without Mm me. Yeah, it was a game that in my head I wanted to love. Like it just it looked so cool. And I like the components and all that. It was sweet. And I totally agree. Building the map was like one one of the in terms of like actual fun gameplay was actually one yeah. of the most fun parts. Uh, the, the game just. Yeah, I, you you like on paper, it sounds cool, but it was just so finicky and there it's were just a lot of, of a mess of a game. Yeah, and there were just some a, of that's in a good way. But so yeah, it just like 
And I think like it hasn't aged super well now that there are all these other big Kickstarters that, you know, have a little bit better graphic design, maybe have a little bit more modern mechanisms. Um, But I I know it's actually still pretty high on Board Game Geek. I don't know that you can get it anymore, but it's got kind of a, you know, it's got a fan base behind it that still sings its praises, but it wasn't one that stuck around for us. Yeah, like the whole, I mean, like you're saying, the whole objectives and all that, like that all sounds cool. But then when, yeah, when a player is just running away from you and you spend your entire game of this heavy game just chasing someone and you're never actually able to get to them. Or someone has the giant mech and the way the scenario went, they're like stuck in a hallway, like oh yeah, taking a turn to like break (laughs) through a wall. And it's like, it's kind of cool that the system like supports this (laughs) happening, but it's also like not that fun. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, but not fun. That is a, that is earth reborn in a nutshell. So there you go. Number 18. Number 18. Uh, my number 18 is actually a game that I am interested in getting again. So it's been out of my collection for a long time, but there is now a second edition of it. And I think looking back on the many, many plays, almost exclusively two player with you, Mm -hmm. um, I'm realizing this game was really fun. And the second edition really kind of cleaned things up and bring some nice things. This is Summoner Wars. And Summoner Wars, we originally had, well, actually originally, originally, I think we just had like the two player it was like Keith right Goblins the dwarves versus, and the yeah the, whatever that like two player set was yeah, we ended up getting right. the master set of the first edition which had six so we had the big box and we had a bunch of different factions we also got expansion factions mm-hmm. and we played it a lot and i think there's some of these examples of games that we played so much during that stretch that as time went on and our collections grew they left our collection just because we were kind of like burnt out on it or right, like we, we were kind of so done much. with it or like, you know, we weren't getting it to the table because I wasn't, you know, getting as many two player games. But Summoner Wars is a really <laughs> solid two player dueling with the different factions you well, can pull out. <laughs> did I see Summoner Wars? Uh, so Ryan sends out his uh, his wish list uh, for, for, yeah, you it's know, on my, no. it's on my and so birthday I, I see Christmas. Summoner Wars on his wish list. I'm like, we're just coming full circle. Ryan just picked up Small World, which yeah, I got was a game World that again. was our uh, one of the first games we owned left. And now it's back. So yeah, we're just coming full circle. Now. Game. There's a few games that like need a second chance in the collection now that like <laughs> I'm out of the season where I just burnt them to death when our collection was yeah. small and those hey, were the only ones. Killer Bunny's resurgence, just wait. Yeah, it's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually, as a caveat, Killer Bunny's is one that probably could have made this list. We just don't have any data on it. We have it, no data. That's it, it pretty, I started logging list. plays in like 2009, so we have like some pretty good data points here, but Killer Bunny's is all pre. <laughs> and there was a lot of Killer Bunny's. There was a lot of Killer Bunny's. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Summoner Wars, I've logged 72 plays of it. I imagine 70 of those are with you. So um, yeah, who knows? Maybe we'll have to throw down sometime if I reacquire it. Yeah. Uh, I would love to play Summoner Wars again. It's a really great game. Yeah. yeah. Okay, coming in at my number 17 is the game that has the fewest plays on the list. Wow. But it makes the list because it's the, also the longest game I own, which is Twilight Imperium. Uh, this is like both third and fourth edition combined together yeah. um, in it. So I have six plays of it, but that is totaling 48 hours of, of play. That'll do it. I, uh, you got Twilight Imperium third edition uh, a good while ago. That would have yeah, been... Yeah, I did, and literally like six months later, they announced the fourth edition. Right, like, and oh. so did, we played the third edition maybe a few times. Does that sound about right? Um, yes, yeah, something Probably like that. Times, and then yeah. they come out with the fourth edition, and we're like, "Oh my gosh, this just improves everything. It streamlines it more. Mm-hmm. This is great." You get the fourth edition. Uh, played that a few times, but then since I've kind of moved out and whatnot, I was able a couple years ago to acquire the fourth edition with the Prophecy of Kings expansion got to play that two times this last year which two times in one year i mean that's that'll bolster your uh, your hours yeah, yeah. Of, shooting up the list <laughs> shooting up the list so i mean this is it i mean uh you know this is uh as if you watch my top board games of all time uh, currently my favorite so spoiler Spoilers. um but currently my favorite so i would imagine this one has great potential to keep shooting up because I am in a season of loving it and I've 
uh, just yeah prophecy of kings i've got all the stuff everything's sleeved got a neoprene mat for the thing i mean yes, it's just you're committed we, for the long haul i'm i'm committed and uh it's it's a game that's well worth the eight hour typically eight hour per game time commitment so yeah well and with the fact that fantasy flight has been acquired by asmodee christian peterson who originally designed todd imperium that was the game that started fantasy flight games he yeah. no longer is there he's got his new ghost galaxy thing there probably isn't going to be another edition. Like, this probably is going to be the definitive last edition. Which they did, they is really totally did a great fine. job with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's wonderful. Wonderful. So, there you go. Number 17, Twilight Imperium. Nice. Twilight Imperium missed my list. I haven't played it quite as much as you. And, and I know. You need those couple of extra plays. I to would give love it a, to play with you again. It's, yeah. It's, it's been so long. Yeah, I don't know how high the odds are there in our current <laughs> you know configuration, just, but we'll see. Yeah. What the sneak My one number in seventeen, one of these though, is Twilight Struggle. Oh, the other Twilight game in our collection. <laughs> and I thought you were going to say, say Twilight the board game or something like that. You yes, know, from Twilight the, the official movie. <laughs> I didn't board know you game. played that one so much, Ryan. <laughs> I play it solo, and I played it seven hundred and fifty. <laughs> No, Twilight Struggle, long two-player epic game about the Cold War. We did a review for this one. We're both really big fans of it. Most yeah. of our games have been with each other. It can vary from, you know, an hour and a half when Daniel's losing in the early war to three <laughs> oh, hours. Come on, Ryan. You didn't have to do me like that. that. <laughs> um, have I ever really beaten you quickly game. in that game? Have I ever beaten you quickly in that game? Or no? I, I, I think, think, I think so. I don't think you've ever gotten long. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But it's a game that's stuck in my collection. It's a game that I still absolutely love. Don't get a lot of opportunities to play it. I need to kind of find, you know, with us probably not having the opportunity to play it together much, who's going to be the people in my gaming groups that might be the go-tos for getting to this, getting this to the table. Um, but yeah, talk about a consistent game. Got it back in 2011-ish. And I mean, I've played it probably every year since then, like, it, you know, around once a year, two times a year. Um, so yeah, we'll see if it, it's definitely slowing down on its uh, movement up this list, but right. a three hour play time with 20 plays helps it uh, notch in here at number yeah, 17. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a great game. Um, so for me, coming in now at number 16, a game already mentioned, and that is going to be Summoner Wars. So Summoner Wars, I have, uh, looks like about, I've played it 68 times. So is that a little bit, a little bit less than you? Yeah, just a little bit um, less. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a, that's a lot of plays for, like we, I, I sometimes forget how much we yeah. played it. It's like, oh yeah, we, we really did play that a lot. Yeah, I mean, there was a stretch um, of a couple years where literally like, Every night, it was like, "What games are we going to play tonight?" And right. There were a few games yeah, that were was like, like in the like regular Summer Wars, rotation. Race for the Galaxy. Yeah. Uh, maybe Carcassonne was in there sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah, Carcassonne didn't make my list actually, but that that one's up there. Yeah, we did play it a decent amount. But anyways, uh, so Summoner Wars. Yeah, it's a uh, yeah, just a. Uh, the mechanics of it are just really solid. They're really just, uh, it's a slick system of uh, the whole moving the cards around and the, the whole wall thing where you can only mm -hmm. build next to walls. And so if you can destroy your opponent's walls, you know, that really can limit things. I just think that's a really uh, interesting kind of twist on, yeah. on the, whole, uh, the whole system. And then obviously you add in all the factions, which feel very different. It's, it's, they're very fun to try the different ones, kind of learn how they play. I also love in that game the uh, I don't know what you call it. What are the kind of the uh, elite people you have in each deck? There's each deck has like is it champions know, or something, something like that. But yeah. they feel really like when you get one yeah. out, it's like really exciting and they do really cool stuff. I always thought that was such a fun part of Summoner Wars. So yeah, I mean Ryan, with how much we're uh, praising Summoner yeah. Wars, <laughs> I mean that's what happened with Small World. We talked about right. Small World in one of our videos, and I was like, I know. Yeah, and then I we're like, wait a second, I think it was fun. actually fun. Yeah, yeah. So. There you go. Uh, so that's my number 16. Nice. My number 16 is one of the first cooperative games that entered my collection. I think Pandemic might have been like the very first. Um, but this was pretty early on. Became kind of a group favorite for many years. Only very recently left my collection. This is Ghost Stories, 
which only left my collection because the new edition, Last Bastion, yep. um, ended up, I realized that I liked some of the changes they made there. Unfortunately, I am going to keep those plays separate. So this is where, uh, this is where Ghost Stories ends. And it's uh yeah, it was too di- plays. It, it was too different. It wasn't just Ghost Stories 2.0 yeah. where you could kind of, you know, combine it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but 59 plays. It's quite a few plays of Ghost Stories. Yeah. Um, but just we've had so many good experiences of just having a group together, you know, rolling dice and it feels so overwhelming and hard and you're trying to give yourself a chance at the end. Um, I had a lot of plays this actually even like just two player where we always even when we have less than four or fewer than four players, we still play four player. We just control yeah. either each control two or like have a dummy player that we all kind of collaborate on since it's open information. This is better as a four player game. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it it definitely got a lot of plays. And another one that was like consistent. It wasn't just in like 2011 we played it 59 times. Over the years, it kept making it back to the table. Yeah. Um, kind of found new wife with kind of my college group that I um, introduced it to. Really liked it. Um, so yeah, Ghost Stories it has. Yeah, it, still has a, it was you know when it, when it left my collection and I you know I sold it and, and it's like oh, I have a soft spot in my heart for this game. Yeah, that was, when I got it, we're talking we had 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 like seven games in in our like new modern yeah, it was, collection. I was gonna say it's, it was point. very early on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one, I mean, it was just always it it, it de- so often delivered exactly what we were wanting in a shorter time period than something like mm-hmm. a elder tour or anything like that and man it's one of those games that yeah you you talk about and you have so many memories of like yeah. amazing moments that happen also terrible crushing rule losses. Book. Yeah. terrible rule book but. oh yeah <laughs> it was not a good rule book um but a great game great game yes. nonetheless okay now coming in at my number 15 is the second fewest plays on my list um Coming in, make me wonder what my fewest. Yeah, I know you gotta gotta know these things. Mine will be coming up here. Uh, Thirteen plays, Um, and this is another game where it was the original edition and now a newer edition of it, and that is going to go to Through the Ages. So Ryan uh, got Through the Ages way back when we were uh, living together at home, and I'm trying to think how many times I actually. I mean, it probably was only. Well, I don't know. Maybe did I play through the ages like the original one maybe like six times or something like that? I think that. it was like six or seven, yeah. Yeah. Um and I liked it, although the the uh, military side of it was just brutal. Because especially you can if you have a bad a, time. Especially yeah, if you're playing behind. a two player game, which that type of game honestly is best two player because you add more people. <laughs> Well, so I don't know. Long. Best in the sense of it just doesn't take so long. Like, I would love to play a three player game. I think that'd be really fun, but it's just, holy cow, you're spending, you know, a very long time playing the game. Mm-hmm. And the original edition, the military, if you were playing two player, I mean, I just, again, I love, this was how the dynamic Ryan and I had growing up, where oftentimes Ryan's just obliterating me, and I just didn't, yeah. uh, was not, not taking that, that well. So, didn't, ever really think i was going to own it honestly after kind of moving out um but then they come out with this new edition uh and improve they refine some of the military stuff ended up being able to pick up a copy of that off uh facebook marketplace and turns out my wife loves it and so that makes playing this possible <laughs> so, it, yeah i was gonna say it goes from almost not possible it, it goes all, from too. this makes no sense to own to okay this is actually a great game for our collection um, cause we have really loved playing it two player. We've had a lot of really tight games of it and it's, I mean, it is a fantastic game, like just mechanisms across the board. The whole, uh, just system is just so much fun to play in. And, uh, yeah, yeah it's, um, uh, one that I, I know is going to stay in our collection for a long time. So, uh, I would imagine with the long play time, that one could continue to move True. up. Yeah, I have not tried the new edition yet. Again, it's hard it's when it's such a long game, and it's and we don't get that after of gaming when you when you visit after we play Twilight Imperium, we'll we'll sneak in a True. through the ages game. Yes, so. well, and we got to get Twilight Struggle over there too. So. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is an example of one that your n- kind of resurgence with the new edition is what vaulted it onto your list, whereas yep. it didn't make mine because I've only got those older ones. Right. Yeah, definitely one I I want to try the new edition. I always really enjoyed that game. Yeah, you would. Um, you would lo- 
I would. My number 15 has been mentioned. I've just played it a lot more. This mm. is Dungeon Fighter. Nice. And Dungeon Fighter is one that, it's another one of those ones that kind of caught fire in my college group. There were a few games that when I met some, some of these guys um, while I was starting college, like there were some games that just became the group favorites and that was the group that was getting together to play dungeon fighter was one of those games there were days where we play it three times three days in a, or three times in a row um and this is all with the first edition yeah. racked up a lot of plays we talked about it already very happy to have the second edition I might have, outside of the designers, played Dungeon Fighter more than anybody. Because I've played it more than you. <laughs> yeah. uh, like, like, I don't know. I think on Board Game Geek, I have, like, the most log plays or close to the most log plays. Really? Um, yeah. Because it's wow. not, like, that popular of a game. Um, <laughs> but cr- I think kind of criminally underrated. Oh, absolutely. A bit. Like, you look at the experiences we've had with it, and it's like, man, like... There's a lot of groups that would probably love that experience and like the ability to get it to the table with kind of a wide range of types of people. So if you're yeah. watching this, maybe maybe check out. They've got a great second edition now. Check out our well, review of Dungeon Right. Fire. Well, and and it's crazy because even before this whole new edition with and we got the, you know, deluxe version or whatever. Yeah, the collector. Even before that, we never were tired of the original edition. Mm-hmm. Like it's we were never like oh my gosh we need more variability like we were totally content yeah. with it so then they come out with this and we're just like which oh was my so gosh. surprising yeah like a game it, that yeah. didn't like you know do that amazing with the first edition but i guess some of it's just the power of crowdfunding campaigns like these yeah. crowdfunding campaigns love it or hate it they do generate a lot of like community energy and yeah. as that goes it can kind of snowball and that was one of those ones where it snowballed and hit a lot of its Goals. I don't know how many of the people that put all this money into it are actually playing it, or if it's just but do sitting play on the shelf. But I, it. yeah, but I'm thankful for all of them for <laughs> helping make such a good version that I can play. So, wow. yes, Dungeon Fighter 15, and still one that's making it to the table. So and we'll climbing. see if it uh, keeps going. Very nice. Uh, my number 14 is a game I probably the highest ranked game for me that i don't own i believe and that is going to go to mage knight Mm. so yeah i still do not own mage knight i i i've actually been thinking about this recently i'm like i'm gonna have to at some point because occasionally i see the ultimate edition pop up on like facebook marketplace i know i do too that's you just need to keep an eye i do i do because uh so we had the original edition uh and we played that then we got the ultimate edition and i was gonna ask you was it the ultimate edition that added the co-op mode or was that already there no, so the co-op was already in it and we played it in the original yeah then we with the original got the uh first expansion legions of lost legion the lost, lost legions legion, yeah. that's that um that's what added the like volcare cooperative yeah. scenarios um, so it gave you some options with cooperative and then, yeah, eventually I replaced it all with the ultimate. Yeah. So we, we originally played competitive and I think we liked the game mm-hmm. then, but it was really long, but we liked it. But man, when we switched to playing cooperative, that just l- like vaulted it yeah. into the, it was just like, I want this experience to be in a cooperative environment. Well, and it's got um, such a runaway leader problem because it so snowballs with the experience and you getting upgrades right. that when you're playing competitively, it wasn't uncommon for a few rounds in to be like, well, they're going to win, like barring yeah. some huge thing. But right. I guess I'll have fun over here doing my own thing. Right. That's just more fun if that person's on your <laughs> team. <laughs> right. You can actually be happy about it. Yeah. Yeah. So once we started doing that, uh, it really just turned Mage Knight into one of our favorite games. And uh, yeah, we've been able to I've been able to play it uh, 15 times. Um, and I'm, I think I think I'm finding maybe a group here that uh, I'm starting to kind of find the group yeah. that might like those type of games. And so I think once I've uh, got that sort of uh, i'll be keeping an eye out for the ultimate edition because yeah in terms of just game arc and pr- you know f- feeling p- starting at a beginning and then leveling up and feeling powerful all in one sitting uh it's incredible so yeah so incredible that it makes it at my number 14 i've wow, played it we, 20 times though wow, my, my hours up. at each yeah. rank are just a little bit higher yeah um but yeah just an outstanding game one that's 
at this point, almost exclusively a two-player co-op game for me. Maybe three if everybody's playing. But I mean, it's it's long. Like at two two players, you're still talking four hours when you're playing. We usually play the blitz mode, which is like <laughs> faster. Maybe we're just slow, but um, yeah, yeah it just lots of good experiences with it. The switch to co-op really was the difference, probably between it not staying in the collection and being you know one that's one of my top ten games of all time. Um, yeah. Right. So another one that, you know, it doesn't make it to the table often, but when you get four hours with each play, it, it can right. still make some movement on this list. Yeah, um, this is a video that can really highlight some of those really long games we have because you don't Yeah, that's that part of why, to... you know, we could have done just our most top played games of all time, but then we would have just been here talking about children's games because... <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Just, just talking about Beast of Balance yeah. the whole yeah, time. Yeah, just talking about playing with my two-year-old. No. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, it's a little more interesting to uh, kind of evaluate by hours there that's you my go 14 nice coming at number 13 for me a game already mentioned uh two player only one ryan i played uh a decent amount i have played with my wife actually a couple times i don't know i don't know if that'll happen more in the future we'll see but that is twilight struggle um yeah i mean this is one that we i don't think really this didn't really seem like our type of game before no. getting it you know i think we've mentioned before we only got it because it was number one on Board Game Geek, and we're like, okay, it must be cool. Let's get it. Yeah. And I'm so glad we did because, in I mean, I I mean, you can go check out our review. We were pretty glowing review on it. It's yeah. uh, just the I think the best blend of mechanisms tied in with the theme and just how it all kind of comes together. And you know, th this one's funny in terms of play time because as ryan mentioned earlier um it can vary <laughs> you know you yeah, ryan yeah. can beat me in a couple hours or we can go all the way to the end of the war late war and it's a you know over four hour game um so it can vary a little bit but man we have uh went a game that just has such a fun arc and by the by the end i mean when you're in that late war and there's just you have all these the places that you're world. trying to manage and swing and also deceive you know i'm trying to not make it obvious to you what yeah. i have and or areas it, that you're like ahead in but you're like man i really hope they don't somehow swing that area but yeah. like do i put resources into it when i'm already ahead when there's so the, many other things there's it's, just it's so beautiful. much tension in it and it's just a, a wonderful wonderful game so uh even though no longer at number one uh still i think one of the just best designed board games honestly yeah. so there you go number 13 twilight struggle excellent uh my number 13 is a game that really like vaulted the mechanism of card drafting into the it became very very popular specifically after this game this is seven wonders and we were in at, on Seven Wonders right at the ground floor. The year of its release back, I don't know, was that 2011, 2010 or something? We got um, it right when it came out. I remember researching it when it was in the new wow. hotness um, and getting it, yeah, pr pretty much right when it came out. Um, that became a staple in our like family group for a oh, long man. time. I mean, talk about a game that, you know, our family, we've got, Dang and I have two other siblings and then you started bringing in like significant others and stuff. And suddenly a game that can go to seven players, eight players with the expansion, but still had a little bit of meat to it was just like perfect. And plays and so quickly. We, yeah. And plays quickly. Um, so we played that a ton. We got a bunch of the expansions. Daniel actually still has that copy with all of that I do. stuff and just laments that he can't get it to the table as much. It's, the box is in rough shape. Like. It's, it's, yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's gotten beat up a bit. And I'll just quickly jump in because my number 12 is also Seven Wonders. Uh, it's almost like most of our plays. Yeah, it's almost together. like we played yeah. a lot of games together. Uh, I totally agree. It's This one will be interesting because I think it's going to keep dropping on this list solely because it's just not what people that i've gamed with a decent amount just often aren't choosing this one and mm -hmm. it honestly is sad because i've played it a ton and i still just love it i could always play a game of seven wonders i think it's fantastic uh but mm -hmm. other people maybe it feel like it can be a little simplistic or want to try some other stuff um and so then it's really only coming out for me if i have like 
a newer group, but then if I have a lot of people, like if I have a newer group and I'm, but it's only like four of us, we're probably going to play something else. So it's kind of in a tough position to get played a lot now just yeah. because we have so many other games whereas back when we had you know not that many games we don't have that many games that are like perfectly filling niches and so something like seven wonders which can just do good for such yeah, a broad yeah. category it's like yeah let's play seven wonders again uh so yeah i came in with 80 plays of it um and uh, it's, we'll slow, we'll still slowly go up because I mean it's I I really don't see me getting rid of it unless there's like something that comes out that so clearly does what it does better in terms of that yeah. many people some strategy um, and a kind of a, a nice step up from something like a sushi go or uh, something mm-hmm. like that. So there you go, yeah, number twelve, uh, which is pretty high for a game yeah. that <laughs> doesn't take that long to play. Seven wonders. Very nice. My number 12 is the first game I've talked about that didn't benefit from being in that time period 10 years ago where like we were playing like crazy. So this is a newer one that still has managed to climb up the list quickly. And I anticipate it's going to be one that only climbs higher on this list because it is one of my, one of our favorite strategy games of recent years. This is Terraforming Mars. Mm. I just had the opportunity to play this recently. I think I'm at 29 plays now. Just a game that hits in so many of the right ways for me, um, especially when I'm with a group that knows the game and we can draft the cards in the research phase and use the colonies expansion. Um, But it's not a short game. I mean, I was looking, my average plays for this typically are like, you know, over two and a half hours. Yeah. Um, but it never feels like that when you're playing it. It's just, mm-hmm. you're so, um, it's so satisfying to get those cards and build this engine and get more powerful. And, you know, the interaction with the milestones and wards and the board. Um, so right. it has consistently hit the table. I mean, I've only had it for probably coming up on five years now. Mm-hmm. Whereas some of these other games I've had for 15 years. Yeah. Um, but it makes it up to number 12. Well, I was going to say, I feel like for that tier of game, like that that heaviness of games, Terraforming Mars is one of the most, I feel like, w- well-received in terms of, yeah. I feel like most people, very few people that we introduce it to who obviously need that, like heavier games, but yeah. are, don't like it. It just really mm. uh, seems to be so uh, well-received. And obviously in the board game community, it's one of the most... Uh, one of the most popular ones and we've got new content coming uh coming for it we've both back to prelude Prelude 2 2. uh so excited for that but uh yeah that one's definitely gonna keep uh keep moving up uh both of our lists potentially spoiler um wow yeah sorry coming in close to bring it bring it home here for this video number 11 is a game that if we're looking at the graph of uh hours played you would have thought it was dead (sighs) You would have thought it was a, a flat line. Is it just never going to be revived? But if you, you look in the last month, the graph is now turning very upward. And this is going to go to Star Wars Imperial Assault. Oh, got it, got it. <laughs> because Brian, I don't think, knew what I was saying with that, uh, that analogy there. I was thinking, but yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, so Star Wars Imperial Assault. I got way back in uh, high school and had a group and we played it. We were just talking about this. I played through the main campaign, full campaign, then a side campaign, the twin shadows, and then half of the return to Hoth campaign. Unfortunately, we weren't able to finish that, but then I go to college and I play through the full base campaign again. But then after that, there was no, uh, no Star Wars Imperial Assault. Hadn't played it at all for a long time. What used to be my number one game of all time. And just because I know it's never playing, it was dropping, it was dropping. But as of a week ago, about a week and a half ago, we have a group that is starting up another campaign of it. And after even just first couple plays, absolutely loved it. We have a great group for it. And so uh, I feel like this one, man, has... (laughs) If, yeah. yeah i mean there's so much content for it like if you have a group that loves it my gosh you, there's so many campaigns you could play and all that yeah. sort of stuff so which campaign are you doing now 
We're just doing the base campaign. The base um, campaign. Which is funny. I'm on the rebel side and I've played the Imperial side. I've actually played the base campaign twice. So you would think yeah. I would remember everything. And yet we're playing the opening mission. And I have I still forget there's a uh, an e web engineer with a massive gun just right behind the door. Uh yeah. which e web engineers are very scary. Um so kind of nice that I don't know if that's a uh something with the game or if my memory is just really bad and hey, I should it's be like concerned. People that, it's like people <laughs> that can rewatch movies because they don't remember yeah. if they've ever seen them. So. But I'm thankful for it because I'm able to experience some of the surprises again. So yeah, I mean playing it again it reminded me why it is one of my favorite games of all time. And uh, I think there's gonna be a lot of plays of it coming in the near future. So excited for that. Nice. Uh, I guess I'm wrapping us up here. I mentioned that my last one, Terraforming Mars, was the kind of newest addition to the collection that managed to make this list. This next one of all the games on the list is the oldest game. Um, It was one of the, after Killer Bunnies, it was one of the first two Uh, games that we picked up that really just like solidified us going down the rabbit hole into modern board gaming. This is Dominion. Mm -hmm. And so... You just got to go back to this season of life where we have discovered this new thing that we're like, these are amazing. Yeah. And our options are basically small world and dominion. Like at least at the come on. Or killer bodies. But at the (laughs) beginning. And so if we only had two or three players, usually small world wasn't going to be the Yeah, it was better four or five. five. And so I mean we played Dominion over and over and over, which I have to say, we picked a good game yeah, I was to just be about the to say, game. I was like, what a perfect game when you yeah. only own like two board games. Because you always can randomize the set of the cards, so you're always getting a little bit different experience. We quickly started picking up some of the expansions, and we did end up quickly getting other games, too. So we yeah. weren't just with two games. But I've got 168 logged games of Dominion. I know there's ones from before I started logging. Because wow. it was shortly after that I, I began logging on BGG. Um, so who knows, maybe this should be a little bit higher, but lots of plays still, I still think Dominion is a a great game. One that I recommend. Um, it's not one that I personally choose to own probably just because I've played it so much and maybe I find myself a little bit more drawn to getting deck building in some other ways, but Mm -hmm. there is something about the, the purity of Dominion with the variable setup. Yeah. That's just really, really a fun game to play. Yeah. I get my Dominion itch through uh, Aeon's End. That's uh, kind of where I, I get a little bit of that deck building feel. Um, do you have, I'm trying to think, do you have a game that is as close to kind of pure deck building as uh, as Dominion or, That's or not a really? That's a good question. Yeah, I was trying to think what, what you, well, dang, Ryan, you got a hole in the collection. Big hole in the collection. You know, I've got ones that have deck building, like Dune Imperium has deck building, Mage Knight yeah, has deck building, yeah. but it's nothing kind of that's like, kind of like that. You could argue that something like Quacks of Quedlinburg gives bag a little building. bit of the same feel with the bag building, but yeah, who knows? Maybe yeah. <laughs> we're on this uh, trend of me reacquiring. <laughs> yeah, games. I know. I'm gonna get you know Dominion's back. coming. Yeah, I'm going to see somebody yeah. selling it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But there you go. That wraps up our 20 to 11. And as you've seen the stats going by, you probably have been like, wow, they've played some of these games a lot. We do. Well, we've got play our 10 games. more ten coming more. in the next video that we have played even more. Um, but yeah, excited to talk about some of these games that we haven't talked about for a while. If you want to check out any of these games that we mentioned, we've got some links down below, and that's also a way that you can support the channel, clicking on those. And we've also got a couple more videos here, and we will see you in the next one.